Hi everyone, this video is a continuation of our first high frequency word video. This video is focused on high frequency words in context. Um, we want to explicitly instruct the students on high frequency words in isolation, but we also have to provide opportunities for them to practice the words in context. Before we go any further into our instruction, I do want to just briefly touch on the definition again. High frequency words are words defined by usage. They are words that are commonly appearing in our language. And if we think about building students' automaticity, so they can become more fluent readers, so that they can become better comprehenders and better communicators. We want to make sure they're able to recognize words that are most commonly, most frequently seen in our written language and our spoken language. High frequency words, sometimes um, we use the term sight words interchangeably. Now, sight words are defined by automaticity. If you, your sight word vocabulary is the list of words that you know on sight, meaning you don't have to decode those words. For example, every word on this screen is a sight word for me. I don't have to decode any of those words when I see them. My brain recognizes them automatically on sight. Our, for our students, we would love for high frequency words to become sight words, words that they recognize just by looking at them and not having to do the work of figuring out what they say. And hopefully, with explicit instruction and opportunities for practice and context, our high frequency words will become sight words for the children. So high frequency word instruction, what do the students need? Explicit instruction. Please refer back to the high frequency word video number one. If you um, want to review the explicit instructional routine for high frequency words, um, if you just want to check to make sure you are doing it correctly, that's a great resource to use. Remember, it is not enough to just drill the kids or put the words on the spelling test. You need to make sure you are going through the routine of teaching the words as they um, directly, explicitly to the students. This is the word say. Say it. Say. Spell say. S-A-Y. Study it. Hold it in your brain. That routine. The second bullet point there is opportunities for practice. There are many different ways you can practice these high frequency words. Remember, we want them to become sight words. We want them to be recognized automatically, to build fluency, to build accuracy, to build automaticity. So think of the different ways you can have your students practice. Whiteboards when you're teaching them, opportunities you know, to recognize them in print, um, in text, Opportunities to have them write them into sentences, opportunities to look at them on flashcards, opportunities to practice them at home with a grown-up. We want the children to be surrounded by these words, these really commonly occurring words in the English language, so they become words they recognize by sight. And finally, words in context. I'm going to share some resources with you today to look at how we can put these high frequency words into context so the kids are re getting really purposeful practice with the words in a sentence and not just in isolation. So a question I always consider and always comes up, where do I begin? What do I do with all of this? First of all, you need to make sure you have a solid routine. Make sure you are explicitly teaching the students the high frequency words. Always start there. The second bullet point on here, I know I talked a lot, a lot about this in the previous video, but I thought it really deserved a place here too when thinking about words in context. Those ECRI sentences. So I'm going to head over to the Coach Drive where those are all located so you can see how you can use those um, putting your high frequency words into context. So here I am in my Coach Drive. I'm sorry, I'm in my Google Drive, so let me go into my Coach Drive, and everyone has access to this. If I go into Coach Resources, one of the folders is High Frequency Words from ECRE. So each grade, um, well, kindergarten doesn't have sentences, but there's kindergarten ECRE, first grade ECRE, and second grade ECRE. ECRE is a program we went to last year at Patton. So if I go into the kindergarten ECRI, and I went through the list of sight words um, with the expectation that the students had already been through the whole 
group once in first and second grade, but in kindergarten, I tried to just build these little grids um, based on words that they were, as they were introducing them. So, you know, taking a look at this, thinking about using the words in context. This is such a quick routine for the kids. The word is an, word an, let's read, a, word an, word like, word am. They really, you know, have to access that automaticity and bring those words to, um, to the forefront of the brain as they're seeing them in a group. If you know, use your feedback then. If the kids seem to not really be sure of what the words are, that's a great opportunity then to stop, reteach. You know, you can get so much feedback from those kind of activities. I'm going to go to the first grade high frequency word sentences. So each of the words are in sentences here. There's little places to write them. Um, each word is presented in the order that the, the four words that they use that particular week. There is the opportunity to write them using the word bank and on the back of the paper, the opportunity to write them without using the word bank. So the same four sentences, so they don't have to try to be, make meaning of it, but they um, are really focusing on spelling those high frequency words. So I came back over to my slideshow to look at the third bullet point, which is high frequency word passages. I was thinking um, about how could we put those words into some meaningful passages. I was looking for things on different sites and I was like, why don't we just make them? One thing you could do is put your ECRI sentences together into a paragraph or, you know, I made these for first grade, but I am happy to make them for kindergarten or second grade. And let me show you what that is and how to use it. So here's an example of a first grade high frequency word paragraph using those same four words that we saw on that first group of sentences. So um, the paragraph is pretty decodable for first grade at this point in the year. The high frequency words are saw, use, want, and more. And you see it's the same paragraph two times, but in the first paragraph, I just made the words, I whited out the words. You can see if I highlight them there. So, you know, you would have the opportunity to have the students um, make meaning and put the words in, or you could just practice them um, with the, the paragraph put together. So let's look at some ways that you can practice this. So we talked about the why. We want students to be putting the words in context to make them automatic readers. The what, there's some places for some resources. And now the how. How can I use these passages? Consider your purpose. I know I say that all of the time. So think about, do you want the students to be practicing writing the words? Do you want the students to be practicing the words in isolation? Or do you want the students to be putting the words in, into passages to make meaning? There are all different, different things you can do to practice your high frequency words, and you may have a different purpose on each different day. Okay, so taking a look at this, I'm going to vary my levels of support depending on what I need. So I'm going to begin with this paragraph. It's all put together. Monday, I'm going to explicitly do my routine of teaching saw, more, want, and use. We're going to say it, spell it, say it, write it. Wednesday, we're going to use those high frequency ECRI sentences here. The students for a warm up are going to write the words in. And then during my explicit instruction time, we're going to read them together. Finally, on Friday, during my high frequency word instruction time, I'm going to put this paragraph up on the board. I'm going to tell the children to read this paragraph read it to themselves. I want to let the children have as much independence as possible, pulling it back if I need to, but making sure that they're doing the work of reading. I'll give them about, what, a minute to read this paragraph. And then we're going to read it together. We always want to make sure the children have a model of the correct way to read the words. After we read it together, I'm going to present, I'm going to take this one away, and then I'm going to present this one with the words missing. Maybe I will, as we read it, Mary and Sam blank a bird in a tree. All right, boys and girls, what was that word there? And then they can write down the word saw. They already read it in context. They already made meaning. But just my, maybe my students need a little more practice spelling the word. So I'm going to have the students spell the word saw on their own whiteboard. They, they blank to watch the bird. What word is that? 
want. I want you to write down the word want. So think about then, you know, you can use the passage that way. Here's another way you could use it. Maybe you're only going to use this part. Have them read it, whisper read it to themselves. And then turn to a friend. You're going to read the paragraph to your friend. And then your friend is going to read the paragraph back to you. You're practicing, you're reading aloud to practice fluency, and you're hearing another student use those high frequency words. Maybe you're going to use just this one. And you're going to put little numbers, one, two, three, four. And as you read it, the students are going to write down the word that would come there. So there's all sorts of different ways you can use these passages. There's never a wrong way to do it as long as you are allowing the students to do that work of reading. And finally, I put down practice and check. Give the children time to practice using these high frequency words in isolation. Every so often, do a check-in, do an assessment. Say, hey, I'm going to give you this paragraph. I want you to read it aloud to me to see if they're automatically recognizing those words in context. Maybe you want to check their words in isolation. Maybe you want to do a little spelling check on them. Any way that you know you can gather feedback from your students and then adjust the level of support given when they encounter the words in a paragraph or they kind of um, experiencing a little pause when they get to them. That's a great time to maybe then take it sentence by sentence, underline, highlight, calling attention to those words that you've been practicing. Maybe they are zooming through the words in the paragraph, but when they're reading them in isolation, they're struggling to recognize them um, on a flashcard or on a sheet of high frequency words. Then you could pull back out your explicit routine in teaching those words in isolation. Use feedback from your students. I will include the high frequency paragraphs on um, the drive in that high frequency word folder. I will put them in there as soon as they are all created. I just want to encourage you, you know, to give your students as many opportunities as possible to allow high frequency words to become sight words.